So Kirk is going to walk us through the card light painting post-processing technique that he used in this photo. What's going on YouTube? My name is Mo and I'm a car photographer from Bahrain. If you'd like to learn all about car photography and Photoshop, then go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss out on all the cool stuff that I create every week. Okay, now before I start, I'd like to start with you. What kind of technique do you prefer using when shooting cars? Do you prefer using light painting or do you use flash and strobes or any kind of different techniques that you have? Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. So this time I collaborated with Kirk from AutomotiveLightPainting.com and I came across the site where one of my followers sent me a link to one of his photos on the website and I was like, whoa, this is great. This is awesome material. If you're not familiar with the site and you haven't registered yet, I really urge you to go to AutomotiveLightPainting.com and actually register. The amount of information available on the website is just amazing. All right, things like how to build your light painting kit under $130. I've always wanted that information. I needed that information about like two, three years ago when I first started. I never knew where to start or what kind of components that came together to you know form a light painting kit. And on top of that, he has the introduction series in which he actually shows you how to light paint a car the different passes and the different techniques that you should be doing in order to get a really nice, soft and smooth lighting across the car. And he's also developing the next series in which how to combine these shots in Adobe Photoshop. Now here's another lovely feature within the website. Once you're done with light painting and you have the image ready, you can go ahead and upload it to the sites and share it with the community over there and get, you know, you have to know people, reach out and learn from each other. So don't miss out. Go ahead and register right now. I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, as usual, enough of this. Let me hand it over to Kirk. Hi, my name's Kirk Bentley and I'm an automotive photographer from Brisbane, Australia. I specialize in a technique called automotive light painting. Now I've been doing this for about five years and I'm still learning every time I go out. I shot this Dodge Hellcat late 2017. This is one of my favorite images, not because it's a great image, but because I learned so much during the process and I thought it would make a great example to break down for you. This image was made from nine separate exposures. The trick to creating a good multi-exposure image is to have a solid base frame. The base frame I've chosen to use in this case has the vehicle's lights and brakes on. Now let's take a look at the other exposures used to create this image. It's very important to light not only your subject, but also the environment. So I started lighting the shipping container and also the ground. And this really helped place the car in the environment. Next I lit the wheels from a few different angles. Then I started introducing some highlights for the guards and bonnet. And finally, I bring in some rim light for the roof line. Now that I have all the light painting exposures layered and masked, it's time to fix any lens distortion and correct the horizontals and verticals. Once this is done, I do a general cleanup. In this case, it was only a matter of removing a hotspot from the rear and an unsightly part of the building. Next, I start playing around with some base adjustments. This is where I established the overall color grade for the image. And this is a, a pretty creative process for me. I just play with some adjustment layers until I get something that I like. In this case, I started with a curves layer, bringing up the brightness for the midtones. Then I introduced another curves layer, brightening some of the darker tones and then another curves layer to introduce a vignette. So brightening just the, the car itself and darkening some of the areas around the car. 
Then I added a color lookup table. Mo has some fantastic tutorials on lookup tables. I recommend you check them out. Next I added a gradient map. I thought some teals might look nice in the shadows. Then I added another curves layer. Bumping some blues into the midtones and reducing the greens. Then finally I added another curves layer, specifically targeting the midtones. Brightening, bumping the blues and the greens. At this stage I was pretty happy with the overall color grading of the image. So I thought I'd move on to some dodging and burning of the wheels and the shadow underneath the car. Now it's time for sharpening. I started off with a smart sharpen for the entire image and then high pass sharpening just for the car. Now it's important that you sharpen any image to help bring out all the little details. I wasn't happy with the environmental reflection in the side of the car, so I decided to recreate it. This involved mirroring the image, masking it off, adding a bit of color, and then dodging and burning it. The image was really starting to take shape at this stage, but there was one thing that was bugging me. The ride height of the dodge. It was time to lower it. Next I decided to dodge and burn the rubber. It was looking just a little bit bright. Now it was time to dress the image up a little. I felt like the building in the background was just a little bit bright, so I quickly added a gradient just to send it to the shadows. I introduced some diagonal lines just to reinforce the fact that it was a dodge and to also help lead your eye to the car. The image is still looking a little monochromatic, so I decided to start introducing some more color. Starting with the brake lights, and then moving on to the foreground. Still not quite enough color, so I decided to really bump it up in the corners. And finally I added some light leaks, just to give the image a bit more character. You can see that they're nothing more than simple blurs on a black layer. But once you set them to screen and mask out the areas you don't want to affect, they really come into their own. Time for the final color adjustments. I started by brightening the highlights, increasing the greens in the mid-tones, dropping some of the blues, then moved on to adding a brightness adjustment layer. And another LUT with the 3D strip look. And then vibrance just to bring out some of the hidden colors in the image. And then split toning where I uh, introduced a lot more blues into the shadows and midtones, And increased the greens in the highlights. Just a fraction. Finally, I added a linear dodge. This is just a really quick way of really giving the colors some punch. One of the last steps I do is a noise reduction. I use the Define filter from the Nick collection. It does a fantastic job of reducing noise. I'd realize you can do this within Photoshop or Lightroom. I just find this quicker and easier. And the final step is, of course, adding my watermark. Well, that's it, guys. Thanks for sticking around and watching the video. I'd just like to say thank you to Mo and his fantastic YouTube channel. Keep up the good work, mate. Hey, you're welcome, Kirk. And it's been a pleasure actually having you on my channel. It actually makes me happy to see other car photographers sharing the knowledge with other photographers. That's a great thing to do. All right, so if you have any questions to Kirk or to me, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram. And I'll see you in the next video.